On today's episode, we are going to check out the simple genius culinary cuisine of Portugal. Portugal. I think that there is only one country on average per capita that eats more french fries than Americans, and that's the Portuguese. Now, I will have to say that you will probably not enjoy traditional Portuguese food very much if you are vegan. But thankfully, there are a lot of wonderful vegan restaurants popping up all over Portugal for your veg needs. But as a kind disclaimer, I would stop now if meat or seafood offends you. Number one, Porco Alenchana. Usually I save the best for last, but I am doing the opposite here. This is one of my favorite dishes of all time in Portugal, and it bangs. Porco alenchana, which basically means pork prepared in the style of alentejo, consists of pork and clams, usually served with potatoes and cilantro. The pork is usually marinated for some time in one of the best marinades ever created, vinha do alho, which is basically white wine, garlic, and a bunch of amazing herbs and spices. If done correctly, the pork will melt in your mouth and absorb all the rich flavors of the marinade. It is disputed by some that it comes from Alverca do Ribatejo, about 30 minutes northeast of Lisbon. But if you see Porco Alenchana as a prato do dia or plate of the day, definitely get it. Number two, frango asado or piri piri chicken. Frango asado translates to roasted chicken, and man did the Portuguese know how to roast some chicken. And when chili hot sauce is added to the mix, it is called piri piri chicken. In Portugal, chicken is usually roasted over an open fire to give that nice char that ain't so healthy but definitely tastes amazing. If you're from the United States, you may be a little surprised on how the chicken is cut here. But fear not, it's the same old bird that you know and love. One of the most famous places to get this piri piri chicken is in the Algarve, in a small village called Guia. But you can pretty much find it darn near anywhere in the country. It is typically served with a nice helping of french fries called batatas fritas and a nice little salad. This one is highly debated depending on if you are from the north or the south of the country. One sandwich with more cholesterol, meat and cheese than almost any in the United States. This is the sandwich your cardiologist warned you about. But it's good. Real good. Most people from Porto will tell you that the francesinha is one of the best culinary creations ever invented. For me, you have to make sure that you visit one of the good places in Porto. Not the tourist traps, not the francesinha sauce you can buy in the supermarket. So far, I have been to Brazão in Aliados and the Tapas Café Porto and both places know how it's done. The sandwich, which translates to Little French, apparently was invented when a Portuguese man named Daniel Silva immigrated to France and came back to Porto. He deconstructed the croquet monsieur and put it back together with Portuguese products. Although it seems like something that was more invented by someone that was very, very stoned. Ha, <laughs> Francesinha! The sandwich is constructed like this. Two pieces of white bread, two pieces of cow milk cheese, two pieces of mortadella ham, a grilled beef steak filet, then some Portuguese linguiça smoked sausages, the bread is then put on top of the sandwich, then more cheese is added on top to create a cheese blanket, It is then drowned in a beer sauce with tomato, maybe some shrimp carcasses and other secret spices. It is then put into a clay brick oven that has a very distinctive taste and from what I've been told is extremely important to the flavor. Then it comes out of the oven and a sunny side up egg is placed on the top. It is then served with that same beer sauce which is delightful to dip your hand cut fries into. And that, my friends, is the Francesinha. When eating foreign foods when traveling, I like to make sure that I stay regular. 
Luckily, today's sponsor, Colon Broom, can help with just that. Colon Broom sent me a sample of their tasty strawberry powder. Just add a scoop to a 12 ounce glass of water and stir. Surprisingly, it actually tastes really good. The main ingredient in colon broom, psyllium husk, may be an effective tool in improving or preventing a loose stool. If increased fiber is taken in conjunction with other dietary and physical interventions, such as exercise and calorie restrictions, it may promote weight loss processes. It can work as a prebiotic and nourish healthy gut bacteria. It's definitely helped me get my digestion track back on track. Let's face it, everybody poops and there's no shame in that. Right now they are doing a holiday special, 65% off a six month supply of colon broom, plus an additional 10% off, just enter the code Dave in Portugal 10 at checkout. Click the link in the description below to get yours today. Number four, the sapatita. This is basically a crab dip from heaven. There can be hard boiled egg, beer, mustard, all blended together with the innards of the crab to create one of the best dips ever created in my opinion. Anthony Bourdain almost fell out of his chair when he had this at Hamiru in Lisbon, but you can definitely find it in basically all of the towns and villages along the coast of Portugal. And believe me, this stuff is good. This stuff is too good. Usually it's served with buttery garlic bread, but be careful because this stuff is highly addictive. Is there a Sepatheta Anonymous anywhere around here? Number five, the Bifana. Now, Americans are obsessed with the hamburger and the Portuguese are obsessed with the Bifana. Now, there are a couple different kinds of Bifanas depending on where you are in the country. In the north, you can have a bifana with leitão, which is baby suckling pig. In most of the country, you can get a bifana with a strip of pork. And then you have the prego, which is a steak sandwich from a cow. These are all usually served with a delicious brick oven bread, and there are many different variations around the country. It's very important that you go to a good place for these as there are some places with dry, tough, and chewy meat that is definitely not the business. Usually the dirtier and older the place, the better. Number six, ajos do moriscos. Now this is definitely one of my favorite seafood dishes of all time. It literally translates to rice with seafood and to me, the consistency is somewhere in between an Italian risotto and a Spanish paella which is amazing to me because I think that some paellas can be quite dry for my taste. It usually comprises of a variety of shellfish, peppers, tomatoes, fresh herbs, and short grain rice, making it an indulgent and delicious dish. A perfect medley of shrimp, clams, mussels, cooked in a white wine garlic sauce, and onion seasoned with cilantro, it becomes utterly apparent that the Portuguese certainly know how to cook seafood. And like most seafood on this list, I would highly recommend trying this dish in a coastal town, known for their seafood like Nazaré. Number seven, caldo verde. Now for all of you health nuts out there, this collard greens kale cabbage soup is almost healthy. And it would be until they add the smoked chorizo, known to the state of California to cause cancer. But it is good. My friends, it is oh so good. On a cold rainy day in Portugal, there is nothing more comforting than a nice bowl of caldo verde, served in a clay bowl. This is simple food that nourishes your soul. You can find this soup scattered all throughout Portugal, even in the trendiest restaurants doing fancy interpretations of it. But the best will always be in a grandma's house in the rural countryside. Number eight, Chaco Frito. Chaco Frito basically stands for fried cuttlefish. Now, it is in the same family as the squid. However, in my opinion, cuttlefish reigns supreme when comparing it with calamari. The pieces are usually much bigger, and in my opinion, when cooked correctly, much more tender. This is a very typical dish when in the Stubel region, which is about 45 minutes south of Lisbon. It is usually served with a side of french fries and a salad, and I would highly recommend trying this if you are in this region. Number nine, migas. 
This is basically the Portuguese equivalent to stuffing in America. Best known in the Alentejo region, it is broken up pieces of delicious Portuguese wheat bread, soaked and cooked in pork fat. I mean, what doesn't taste good when it's soaked in fat? Usually with some green cabbage and sometimes beans. It is such a delicious filling side that goes along with seafood, meat, bacon, pork, pretty much anything. This is it folks, the best for last and I couldn't do a video about Portuguese cuisine and not include Portugal's most beloved fish, codfish, aka bacalhau. It is crazy to think that with all the seafood along the Portugal shore, the one that they are most obsessed with and eat the most is actually found off the shores of Norway and Newfoundland. In the mid 1500s, during the Portuguese discoveries, an expedition headed to India discovered Newfoundland. And so began Portuguese cod fishing. These fishermen would salt the cod so that it could be preserved along their long journeys. They brought this tradition back to the mainland and bacalhau basically became as important to the Portuguese as hamburgers are for Americans. This version is my favorite, which is bacalhau a lagareiro, which is basically means to be drenched in olive oil because a lagar is where olive oil is mashed in. Roasted with garlic to perfection, this dish really showcases the masterful simplicity of Portuguese cuisine. It is usually served with a side of typical smash roasted potatoes. As you can see, Portugal has some incredible food traditions to offer, and if you're lucky enough, you might just be able to try them all for yourself. If you want to see more content about Portugal, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button because I'll be posting videos like this every single week. This is some guy named Dave in Portugal, and we'll see you next time. Time to go eat a little bit of food.